close to zero are fine. Uh, we usually set it to two degrees, but uh, whatever works. Um, and the idea is to stress up the yeast a bit, so it will uh, keep uh, um, the yeast is still active, but it will uh, start slowing down. Uh, and the beer will get uh, finer and finer, but also the, the yeast will drop into the bottom, so the yeast get, will the, the beer sorry will get clearer, um, and that's the main the main reason for it. Yeah, uh, fully agree. Uh, for the lagering, normally uh, if you are DIY again, uh, you can use um, uh, an old fridge that you are not using, or you can uh, buy a second-hand fridge that is not that expensive remove all the shelves and you can easily um, put um, a fermenter of 20 liters, 25 liters inside the, the fridge and cooling down. Uh, most of them, they will not give you the two degrees that we suggest, um, the three degrees that we suggest, but uh, it gives you four or five degrees. Uh, you just need to make it, uh, make the lagering a bit uh, longer. Uh, yeah, sure it will work as well with uh, with five degrees. It will it yeah. will definitely just make work. it a bit longer to give time for everything to sediment in the bottom. Exactly, and I would just say just just don't lager if you're not sure your fermentation is over because you will stop down the yeast, uh, and it's not yet. If it's uh, yeah, if you're not sure the fermentation is over, uh, it might just restart after afterwards. Uh, so just give it time before you start lagering, and the lagering step. Uh, it can be from one week up to three weeks. It's really up to you. Um, well, I would say seven, ten days is 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 a standard. All right. One question from Michelle Pats who's asking if it's mandatory to lager. It is not. Uh, I mean, but it's great for quality. Yeah. You the, the risk you take. I mean, it's, it's possible. It's possible to do it, of course. But you take the risk of uh, putting a lot of. Uh, yeast uh, in suspension in your bottles, uh, super uh, um, uh, dense uh, sediments. Uh, you can transfer all particles to your bottles. Uh, it's really, I mean, if you want a beer to be clear, fine, without uh, chunks around, uh, I, would, I would not skip the lagering uh, step. What about um, off flavors like uh, diacetyl, for instance? Well, in the case of the Belle Saison, she's, it's a yeast that's not very much prone to produce a lot of it. Uh, so diacetyl is enough flavor that happens towards the end of fermentation. Uh, you can also, if you're really worried about that, you can also step, go step by step. So um, re, uh, drop the temperature step by step. So the yeast will still have time to digest those off flavors. Um, but I wouldn't be too concerned about the acetyl uh, in this process, also because you give it a lot of time with the hop yeah. creep and everything. But for example, hop creep can be a factor to uh, to have the acetyl in the bottles because if you don't if you yeah. don't um, if you don't make sure those um, those uh, enzymes uh, are consumed, um, you can have a reaction in the bottle that uh, will create uh, uh, yes, the uh, from the from the consumption of the. <laughs> So maybe that's another good tip. It's uh, always a uh, taste the product. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds silly, but it's true. Actually, uh, if you taste it, you will be able to smell if something goes wrong. Uh, yeah, for, so if it smells a bit buttery or popcorn-y, uh, then you just need to wait a bit because the yeast will, will eat it up. All right, one last question. And I think we're, after two hours, almost ready to bottles. Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's really long. <laughs> it, it is interesting, though. Uh, last question from Joel Franca. All right, Joel, we want your delta as well. Uh, do you have to remove the yeast gone down in the kettle for lagering? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you can, but if you transfer your beer to an, I mean, the only way of doing it is to transfer the beer to another uh, fermenter. Uh, but by doing so, you have a high risk of oxidation. Uh, at this stage, every every bit of oxygen that is in contact with the beer is a, is a threat. So, uh, I would yeah. I would rather try to avoid transferring yeast to the bottles than transferring everything to have a clear beer in the yeah. What what the tank. what you can do is uh, in those in those uh, plastic buckets, uh, if you are getting a nice sediment, you can always uh, incline a bit of the, your your fermentation vessel. And open the, the the valve to get rid of uh, some of the yeast that might stay on the bottom, so you clean a bit of uh, of it, 
uh, but again, uh, it's not necessarily what we we call the, the secondary fermentation can be done in the in the same vessel. Okay, are we ready to move on? Yeah. Yep. All right. Did we, did we answer Leslie's question? Sorry, Leslie. Yeah, Leslie is asking us a question. Uh, what was it? Hello, Leslie. <laughs> so Leslie is asking, as a home brewer, I have two methods I use mostly, or I had hops after about five days in a bag and leave the hops for three days, then transfer for lagering. The other method is adding hops in a bag during transfer for lagering and leave the hops for two weeks until bottling. What method would you recommend for home brewers? Yeah, if, if, if you can also do your dry hopping uh, with a bag, so you, you make sure you're able to remove it from, uh, from your beer and your beer stays as clean as it can. Um, what is best? Uh, I, I, think, I think there's two ways. You either uh, put your hops uh, while yeast is active and yeast will definitely interact with the hops. Uh, some of those like New England IPA super fruity ones, we definitely use the dry hopping a little bit earlier in the process so that we can uh, have that interaction between yeast and hops and and usually so there are some precursors into the hops that the yeast are able to separate from the hops and basically they create more flavor so that interaction creates more fruity flavor so it depends on what you want uh, I think in this case it's not necessary uh, but if you really want to push the diversity of hop aromas you it is, it's a good thing to have that interaction uh, also, what's very common is to use both. So that's what they call double dry hopping. So you use you use one dry hopping in contact with the yeast, one dry hopping later down the process, and maybe at a colder stage. Uh, so you have different kinds of extraction. But it's really down to trial and error and see what fits the best to the kind of beer that you want. I think in this in this uh, I mean there's room there to play. Uh, I think for Delta, stick with late fermentation hopping is great. If you want to try it a bit earlier, it's great too. And if you want to use bags, I mean, it's really up to you. But every time you open and close your fermenters, there is a risk of contamination. Yeah, and also the bag is a, can be a, a, um, a risk of, of contamination as well. Yeah, so we'll sterilize your bag first to boil it before you put the hops in. Or... Yeah, but uh, for me personally, I will avoid to transfer um, to other uh, vessels to dry up. I will dry up everything in the same. So I have less transfers from one to the other. But uh, I think it really depends uh, of what, what we want to do and what you are com more comfortable of. Yeah, I, th I think transfer is a risk of oxidation. It's a risk of contamination. Exactly. So if you can do it without transfer, maybe it's a good way. I mean, if you're confident about what you're doing, you're confident about your sanitation, you can maybe purge your uh, uh, your, your other vessel with CO2. Maybe then it's a very good, then I guess it's a very good method. All right. Well, speaking about uh, cleaning, I think the next step is uh, quite clear. And it's about cleaning bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a. I mean, we we are uh, uh, three weeks to a month from the brewing day, and then you've spent that so many efforts uh, putting everything together and being focused and and, and then reading uh, all parameters and stuff. You want you don't want to fuck it up at that point. So uh, you really need to make sure the bottles you use are clean. So best is to use. Uh, uh, new bottles so do you make sure you're, they're clean if you're reusing bottles then just 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 make sure you, they're super extra clean and also sanitized uh, into the i mean i mean microbial biologically clean um so you can rinse those bottles against there's a lot of space for diy there if you want to uh, make the process more efficient and then and then and then the next step is is a uh, well because, because there's an airlock on top of your fermenter, all of the gas that the, the fermentation produces is getting out of uh, your uh, tank. And that means the beer at the end of fermentation is pretty much flat. Uh, there's a little bit of residual uh, carbon dioxide, but you don't really taste it. So uh, the easiest method for it is to just uh, after fermentation and after lagering, when everything is clean and everything is done, is to just add a little bit of sugar uh, in it. And so it's basically more food for, um, for the yeast. And then you add your sugar into your beer, put the beer into a bottle, cap it, and then put your beer back to fermentation temperature. And doing that 
you will restart the fermentation in the bottle. And in this case, because the bottle is closed, all the gas will remain into the bottle. The pressure will rise and the gas will dissolve into your beer. And that's how you get a nice fuzzy and foamy beer. So before you go to bottling, you need to get some priming sugars ready. Correct. Or if you have a, a carbonation stone, you can still uh, you can still find a DIY to uh, force carb your beer, and then you put it on kegs, or you put it in. If you have a um, a force carb force carb uh, bottling machine, you can also do it. But that's a bit more uh, technologic. I would go just for priming. And so I think there's this little mistake there in the in the in the guide that we. Uh, Broadcasted, it says uh, put uh, dissolve your sugar into 500 centiliters of water. Uh, of course, it it is 500 mm -hmm. milliliters. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to put five liters of priming uh, liquor into a 20 liters. Yeah, I think it's a bit of dilution. No, that's that it's, it's right. a lot of dilution. Um, so we're talking about five five grams per liter, five to six grams per liter. Yeah, we suggested six, uh, but that's fine if you if you do 5.5. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, Basically, the more sugar you put in, the more the CO2 you'll have in, 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 exactly, in the yeah. end. Uh, so if you want to play it safe, you like a uh, flatter beer, just go for, for four to five grams. If you want a fuzzier beer, I'm, go for yeah. to six grams. I, ideally, ideally, we'll have some equipment to read the residual the CO2 in your, in your beer, but uh, not everyone uh, can have it. So if you just play with those, uh, those uh, targets. So. 5, 5.5, 5, 5, 6 grams per All right. Speaking about carbonation, Christophe is asking what would be the carbonation target for the delta somewhere around 2.9 volume? Uh, that's the American way of uh, calculating, I guess. Um, uh, there are two different scales there. Uh, Europe, we use the gram per liter, and I think uh, with the imperial systems, it gives something different. Uh, so 2.9 grams means actually something like six grams per liter. And that's pretty much where we want to yeah. get, yes. Perfect. Uh, Christophe Labetsky is asking, how can we get a nice foam? Is it related to a specific threshold? No, I mean, uh, yes, the more CO2 you have, the more foam it creates, but then the niceness of the foam is not linked with the CO2 actually. It's more like uh, it's more like the process and the, the the first step of mashing in, for instance, is a is a is a critical one. Uh, but nothing you can do at this stage to really increase the foam quality. All right, cool. And then question from Blitz Bob, who is who is expecting a delta as well. Is dry hopping <laughs> with flour a big source of oxidation? Are there ways to reduce this oxidation if necessary? I think uh, it depends on uh, how fresh is the flowers. Yeah. And of course, there's more uh, more um, uh, surface on, on the flower, so you might have more oxygen on it. Um, I would say yes, but it's a more of a gut also, feeling. Yeah. Uh, I would prefer pellets as well. Yeah. <clears throat> but there's only so much you can do to fight uh, oxidation as a home brewer. So uh, uh, if it's your first time home brewing, I wouldn't bother too much about this. Just remember that uh, an IPA is better fresh. So uh, let's make sure you drink all of it uh, within the first couple of months of... Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, not using uh, cones are bad. Huh? For example, the no, 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 not at all. amazing beer with, uh, with um, uh, cones uh, and it's uh, hoppy, freshy, floral. It's, uh, it's, it's a really good IPA made with uh, Volcons, the SX bitter from the Hunk. Uh, it's a good example of a beer that is really well brewed with the uh, Volcons. But because they guarantee the freshness of them. All right. Last question from Chucho Escobar. Chucho, if we manage Chucho. to send your Delta. Hola, amigo. If you manage to send your Delta from uh, Mexico, we'll be sure to test it. Yes. He's asking what about oxidation due to PAA and what about foam in products like Starsen? Does that foam could oxidize the beer? Say, say it again. I, I didn't understand the beginning. What about the oxidation due to PAA and what about foam in products like Starsen? And can that foam oxidize the beer? Yeah, so PAA is parasitic acid. Uh, and yes, it is an oxidative product and it's a great for killing microorganisms. So I think if you use the right percentage, uh, you'll be fine. Otherwise, you can still rinse it. Um, um, 
but if you're using the right percentage, it shouldn't be should so much of a concern, uh, to be honest. Uh, but the star sun, it's not the product that I am used to use. I know soaps in general are not good for foam retention Absolutely. anyway. Uh, so if you uh, just 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 make sure you give it a good rinse, and that should do. Otherwise, I wouldn't be. I mean, if you follow um, suppliers' instruction and you give it a good good rinse, I, it should should be fine. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Last question that just came in from Nicolas Lacroix. If we, if we recycle bottles, are hot water and Kemipro Oxy enough to sanitize? Yes. Yes and yeah, yes and no. Uh, if your bottles are pretty clean from the beginning, I would say yes. But if you just have some leftover bottles that you've had in your garage for a year and then might, there might be some leftovers of beer that have dried into it, then I wouldn't use those ones. So if you want to reuse bottles, make sure they're really clean. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're exploding those ones, right? So we're yeah, those, those will explode, yeah, if they're not really okay. clean, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I, think, I think if the beers are, if you, don't, if you make sure that when you use them, you clean it right away with water, there's not a lot of residue, residue hot water and um, it's Chemipro, right? So what, you, what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it it was Chemipro Oxy, Oxy, yeah. Yeah, I think it will be enough, yeah. Just make sure there's no labels that can go into the like uh, residuals of paper that can go in and into the into the bottle or something like that okay i think oh. we're ready to start bottling now yep uh yeah i'm getting thirsty i'm gonna get myself another beer go ahead uh, guys yeah all right so we finished our lagering we prepared our priming sugar um uh, so we are we what we're gonna suggest is you will transfer uh, the beer now for um, uh, um sanitized kettle uh, normally the same as you as you ferment, um, but something that is is already sanitized in advance that you can put first your um, your priming sugar inside, and then with this uh, beautiful uh, piece of technology, you can uh, transfer from the from the uh, fermentation tank to the um, to the primed uh, tank. Go ahead, Chavi. Right, so you mix it uh, when you transfer it from the from the um, uh, fermentation uh, vessel. So in the right bucket, in the bucket that you have there, so you transfer everything inside and make sure it's well well dissolved. So you give it after the transfer, you just give it I don't know five ten minutes uh, for it, and then there's uh, this um, um, filling valve, filling uh, bottle filler that you will attach in the valve of the bottom of the of the prime tank and that will be the one that we will use for um, for filling the bottles. Uh, so is, is a valve that is, is, is very crucial that you use something similar with that because it fills the bottle from the bottom of the of the um, of the bottle so you don't have uh, a lot of introduction of oxygen you, you don't have a lot of foam and once the liquid is on top of the bottle you just uh, remove the bottle and um, uh, you have the right size of, of it. Um, and that's it. So we, it's very important that we, we try to avoid oxygen in this stage because, again, like Antoine said, uh, you can just ru ruin um, uh, your three weeks of waiting, your five weeks of waiting, whatever. Uh, and then cap it right away. So you have two examples of um, uh, cappers that uh, normally they are normally available. So the right one is a bit more uh, less sophisticated. Uh, it's a very uh, hands-on. Uh, you need to a lot of strength and the, the left one is a bit better uh, just, just your with the strength of your arm uh, just cap it right away um, and that's it and then you wait you put the the bottles in a refermentation uh, area uh, at uh, room temperature i would say like something 20 21 degrees uh, for another two weeks uh, taste one beer every every, every single day or uh, one day you taste it, the other day not, uh, just to keep a track of the evolution of it uh, until it's spot on. So Antoine, what did you find in the fridge? Um, yeah, I've got, I've got this, uh, which is one of our experimental. It's uh, it's our uh, Kolsch. It's a great, uh, <laughs> great, great, very basic beer, but uh, sometimes uh, beauty is in uh, simplicity. Uh, uh, yeah, very much enjoying it right now. We've been talking for quite a long time, right? I think we're all thirsty in this. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll grab one for myself as well. <laughs> so we've been... Are you, still, uh, are you still on the Picobello, David? I, I didn't drink any beer. It's my time. 
<laughs> go, go to the fridge as well. It's oh, time. Yeah, David, David, go to the fridge. I think we've been talking now for two hours and a half almost. As Seb told me a bit earlier, we're almost reaching the level and the length of our Scorsese movie. A little yeah. bit just better, maybe, I wouldn't say. Um, you can do so, a Coca-Cola now. <laughs> so now the beers are uh, ready. I think it's time. Antoine, I'll leave it to you, okay? I think yeah, it's, yeah, sure, time, sure. Uh, it's time for a few last questions that we have. One more from Antoine Guillaume, who's asking, at the very beginning of the live, uh, we were talking about the first beer that we were brewing, and we mentioned some spices like cardamom. Do we think other spices could be used, and how long to infuse, and 